Welcome to Sips from the Fountain. This is Dirk Warren at your service. Today we're going to look at the subject, Obtaining Your Desires. Now this is an awesome subject because we all have desires and we all want to obtain them, right? Let's look at our first passage. It says, The desire of the righteous is only good. The desire of the righteous is only good. Now, the Hebrew for desire there is tahava. It means that which you earnestly long for. It's a desire that stays with you and you can't get rid of it. And it says that this desire is good. Now, if the desire of the righteous is good, then the reverse is also true. The desire of the unrighteous is not good. I think that's just common sense, okay? The desire of the thief or murderer is not good. The desire of the child molester or sexual pervert is not good. But the desire of the righteous is only good. And it's important to grasp this because religion, including Christian religion, has told us for centuries that all our desires are bad. No, only sinful uh, destructive, negative desires are bad, but the desire of the righteous is only good, and you need to pay attention to those desires in your heart as you seek the Lord, because the Lord uses those desires to motivate you to fulfill His will, to fulfill the plan He has for your life. Now, some of you might say, well, I'm not called to be a pastor or a missionary, so God's not even interested in my life. Well, that's not true. God is intensely interested in your life. Okay, even if you're an unbeliever, the Lord is very interested in your life. He wants you to get on his train via the good news of the gospel and let him sort out the baggage, and he has an awesome plan for your life. Now, on that note, let's look at our next passage. It's Ephesians 2.10. This is the Amplified Bible. It amplifies out the Greek. It says, For we are God's own workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, that we may do the good works which God predestined for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life. Now, a few things about this passage I want to stress. It says we were recreated in Christ to do good works. Now, recreated in Christ Jesus is, is talking about spiritual regeneration when you were reconciled to God spiritually. And um, he recreated you in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. These are the objectives, the assignments, the missions that God has for you in life. Okay, that's why he recreated you in Christ Jesus. And also to take paths. Okay, there's more than one path. There's paths for you to take in each area of your life that we should walk in them living the good life. Living the good life. You see, being in God's will is the best possible path for you to be on. It's not Dollsville. It's exciting. It's not mediocre or okay. It's, it's awesome. It's living the good life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life to the full. Life more abundantly. Now, religion might be Dollsville, but Christianity isn't. Now, some people are afraid of God's will because they think it's all doom and gloom and hardships and persecutions. And while it's true that uh, being in God's will, uh, there will be persecutions, there will be challenges... And as you mature, it seems like the, uh, the attacks increase. But life's a fight. Fight it. Higher levels, bigger devils. You will never outgrow spiritual warfare. You simply have to learn to fight. And God will give you the grace to overcome those persecutions and hardships. Now, let's look at uh, our next passage. is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. This is an, this is an important passage. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. In all your ways. You see, there's the circle of life, and you have different areas of life, compartments. You have your occupational life, your marital life. If you're not married, your dating life, your family life, your ministerial life, your social life, your recreational life. And it says, acknowledge God in all your ways, and then he'll be able to direct your paths. 
You see, when you acknowledge God, you're making God first priority. Jesus never said to make God the only priority. He said to make God the first priority. And when you do that and you acknowledge Him and you go to Him and say, Lord, what do you want, what do you want me to do occupationally? Instruct me, teach me in the way I should go, guide me and, and watch over me. You see, I just prayed according to Psalm 32 there. But you want to go to Him and make Him first priority. Acknowledge Him and He'll lead you by making your your thoughts and desires agreeable with His will. And I want to show you how that works. Let's look at uh, the next passage. It's Proverbs 16.3. This is the Amplified again. It says, Roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust them wholly to Him, and He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable with His will, and so shall your plans be established and succeed. Okay, roll your works upon the Lord. What is it that you're intending to do? You know, you have this desire... Maybe it's a desire to start your own business, okay? Or to release an album, or to write a book, or to be a doctor, or be a nurse, or what ha or be an NFL quarterback. Roll your works upon the Lord and say, is, is, is this what you want me to do in this season of my life? Is this where, where you're leading me? And it says that uh, the Lord will cause your thoughts to become agreeable with His will. You see, the Holy Spirit resides in you. And the Holy Spirit will cause your very thoughts and desires to become agreeable with his will and his will will be the predominant desire in that area of life okay see God will not get involved in your life unless you allow him the Lord's gentle the Holy Spirit's likened to a dove God doesn't lord it over people you know, you'll see, you know, managers and supervisors and bosses lording it over people at work. You know, you'll see that in the military. But that's not the way God works. God won't get involved in your life unless you seek Him. So, so seek Him. Uh, Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. But a lot of Christians, they're not asking. They're not imagining. They're not using their imagination. When you start asking and imagining, God will take you to awesome places and you'll be living the good life. Now, let's look at uh, the next passage. This is Proverbs 16.9. It says, The mind of a person plans their way, but the Lord directs their steps. Okay. You sought the Lord. You have this predominant desire. This is your tahava. This is your course. Now it's saying, use your mind that God gave you to plan your way to meet that objective, to fulfill that course. And the Lord will direct you, direct your steps while you're walking that course. You see, you have your course, which is based upon the Tahava God has given you. Then with your mind, you plan your way, and that's your way. And then the Lord will direct your steps. And your steps are you walking towards that goal daily with the help of the Holy Spirit. But you got to use your mind to plan your way. No one plans to fail, but failures fail to plan. And then you got to get up off your rump and start walking. It's kind of like the guided missile. They, they don't guide the missile until they shoot it off. Once they shoot it off, they can guide the missile. And it's the same thing with you for obtaining your desires. you got to get up off your rump. You have the plan. Now start walking. Let's say you're going to go to, uh, you want to be a nurse. Right? So you got to go to nursing school. So you got to use your mind to plan your way. What nursing schools are available? How are you going to apprehend funds? Where are you going to live? Are you going to work part-time? And so forth. So you plan your way. And once you have a plan and you have a peace about it, the Bible says, let the peace of God reign in your hearts, um, then you go forth and, and start moving towards that, that goal. And the Holy Spirit will direct your steps and maybe uh, make you take a bypass here and, and wait here and um, grant you a golden connection there or a golden opportunity. And speaking of golden connections and golden opportunities, not every connection or opportunity is good. you got to let the peace of Christ reign your heart, like I said. Uh, just for example, Joseph was called to be second in command of Egypt. Okay, He was called to the palace, ultimately. But there was a course to get there, right? And he was uh, in charge of Potiphar's house, 
Potiphar was a rich guy and he had a hot babe wife and the wife tried to seduce Joseph because Joseph was a handsome young man. Now, that was a connection. But it wasn't a godly connection, are you with me? It was a counterfeit connection. And Joseph did not have a piece about that connection, so he ran from her. Okay? So there might be some connections or uh, opportunities that you might, you don't, you don't have a piece about it? Trust your spiritual intu intuition and flee. Go the other way. But the Lord will direct your steps. Now I want to talk to you about the sluggard. Proverbs 21.25 says, The desire of the sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. The sluggard is a lazy person. Okay? The sluggard has a desire. That's a tahava. Okay? Maybe they want to be an NFL quarterback or a doctor. Maybe they want to write a book. But it says their hands refuse to work. They may, they may even in their mind plan their way. But they refuse to get up off their rump and start working. They lack discipline. Or... Maybe they're hindered or entangled. You see, the Bible says that we're to throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And the thing that hinders is different from the sin that entangles. Okay, the thing that hinders is a weight. It's a neutral thing. It's not a sin. But it's something that just saps your time, energy, and focus and takes you away from your true calling. It could be any number of things, you know. It could be TV. It could be golfing, boating or computer games. These things are not bad in and of, the, of themselves, but because the person is spending so much time doing them, they're not fulfilling their true, true calling, you see, and they won't obtain their desire. And then you have the sin that so easily entangles. This is a flesh proclivity that the person is entangled in. They're stuck in this web of the sin, whatever it is. It could be alcohol addiction, drug addiction, porn bondage, or an unwise relationship, usually a romantic relationship, when they're just stuck in that web and prevented from fulfilling their true calling. And these people will not obtain their desire, and I don't want that to happen to you. So you got to throw these things off like the Bible says. And you know, also you have to be conscious of a couple things. Some tahavas, some courses that the Lord has for you, are seasonal. Like God might call someone to be a missionary for three years or five years. And then he'll redirect him. When I was in my 20s, I wrote songs. I had a four-track recorder. And uh, I had a drum machine. And I just wrote over 100 songs. And um, I wanted to write and play music. And so I got a band together. And uh, the band lasted three and a half years. But towards the end of that three and a half years, that ta ha ha uh, subsided, and I really no longer had a desire to do it. It's not that what we were doing was bad, it was just I didn't want to do it anymore. Now, other people will be called to be musicians all their lives, but for me, the Lord was leading me in other directions. The other thing you have to be uh, conscious of is timing. The timing of research is not the timing of production, and the time of production is not the time of marketing. Let's take Moses. Okay, Moses had a tahava. He had a strong burning desire to deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Uh, Moses was a Hebrew, but he was the adopted son of the Pharaoh, you see. And he prematurely act up, acted upon that desire without preparation. And he killed an Egyptian. He got into trouble, was exiled in, into the desert for 40 years. And so you've got to be conscious of timing, because just because you have a tahava, a course, an objective, a goal, there may be a preparation time. Like, if you're going to be a doctor, what's it take to be a doctor? Isn't it like 12 years of training? And uh, God will give you the grace to prepare, you see. Proverbs 25 says, The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters. But those with understanding will draw them out. You see, those who are wise, those who have understanding, will look deep within and draw out the purposes of their hearts and seek the Lord at which purposes to pursue. You see, and that becomes your goal. It becomes your objective. And then you use your mind to plan your way to get there. And then you start walking towards it with the help and direction of the Holy Spirit. And it creates its own momentum. And, and, and you, you'll be living the good life. Jesus said, My food is to do the work of him who sent me. You see? 
Jesus would figure out what assignment, what purpose the Lord had for him on any occasion, and he would move towards it. He said that was his food. That was his energy, his sustenance, to do the work of him who sent him. And that's what we're talking about today. So, go forth and obtain your desires, being led of the Holy Spirit, and you'll be blessed. Praise the Lord. God bless you.